Hi, Ariel Klepper at Sinai Innovations with a panel on the psychology of great groups. We're here with Gordon Adelstein, Matt Pendleton as well. And we'd just like to ask you, we spoke a little bit previously with the other speakers about that intersection between the arts and profit, sort of a complex divide. And we're wondering, in the setting of innovation, when do you put aside things like ticket sales? If you're worried that the audience may not love a show, but you think it's an important message to get across, how do you balance the benefit to society with the benefit for the box office? Well, it's your, quest, your, your question is where the rubber meets the road. It's exactly the right question. And I struggle with this on a daily basis because I, um, I'm a theater director, but I'm also a theater producer. I run a theater company. And I have to balance the budget every year um, or I go out of business. And I lose, I lose my job. Uh, and I don't want either to happen. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, um, um, well, you know, luckily what I do is I, I, I produce a menu of plays throughout the year, so I balance it. Um, and, and I've gotten pretty good, uh, not because I'm so smart, just because I've been doing it for a while, I've gotten pretty good at predicting what kind of box office a show is going to do ahead of time. I'm, and I'm occasionally wrong, but not usually anymore, just f by force of habit. Um, so um, I try to balance it, and I, and I know that if I produce a, 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 a challenging new play by an unknown writer, that that will do significantly uh, less sales than if I produce a classic starring Kathleen Turner, um, both of which I did last year. So the play with Kathleen sold X amount of dollars worth of tickets, and that subsidized the play by the unknown writer. And that's really the answer. And the play with the star doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better than the unknown play. It just means it's going to attract more attention. Uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, but I think about this all the time, and I struggle with it, as does, I think, everybody in the arts. The more uh, con uh, 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 concerted hedging effort continuously. Well, I, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's not actually hedging. I and mean, here's why it isn't. Um, you know, we make uh, theater particularly, I don't want to talk about the visual arts, but theater is for an audience. That is, I'm putting on a play and I want to communicate something to the audience. If I'm putting on plays just for myself or the other 25 theater people around, um, I'm not really reaching out to my audience. So the marketplace is not only bad. It's, it's, you know, I, 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 it's not bad to be constantly paying attention to your constituency, let's say. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a leader, and then I, but I'm also a follower. I have to follow, like, like, a, like a member of the Congress. You have to lead your constituents, but you also have to listen to them and follow them. And the need to get reelected every year is not necessarily a bad thing. It keeps congressmen conscious of their the people that they're representing. In the same way, their job is also to get in front of those people they represent sometimes, uh, to tell them, you know what, you guys? Hear me on this subject. We need to support gay marriage. I know many of you can't wrap your mind around that, but this is important. Follow me. So it's a balance, and it's the same when we put on shows. To follow up on something you mentioned during the panel discussion, you said that during rehearsals, as you grow in experience, you 99% of the time have a good sense of whether or not things are going well. How do you develop that instinct about the success of a team, and how does that allow you to innovate? Well, I mean, you really would have to be, um, have the blindness of Mr. Magoo. Uh, to, to not know when a team is working well. When everybody is rolling at the same stroke to use, you know, as if you were on a crew team, you can see it. You can really see it. Um, sometimes, if things are not going well, it's hard to identify the problem. That's the more difficult to, you know, what, what the first sentence, famously the first sentence of Anna Karenina, all happy families are alike and all unhappy families are different each in their own way. So um, we um, need to, sometimes the diagnosis, it's like a doctor, someone's sick, what's the problem? Where do you, do, where is the location of that disease? Um, 
Yeah, very interesting. So it's in the synchronicity, and that should be obvious. <laughs> yeah. Any final questions? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Good luck to you.